pacemaker can be simply defined as a medical device that controls a person's heartbeat. So now we can see medical definition of pacemaker. A pacemaker is an electrical medical device that's generally about the size of a matchbox. A surgeon implants it under your skin to help manage irregular heartbeat called arrhythmia. It can also use it to treat some types of heart failure. So now we can move to the parts of pacemaker. It has a traditional pacemaker and modern pacemaker. Traditional pacemaker has one or two leads. These leads wires that have electrodes on the end. And modern pacemaker, the pulse generator. It containing a battery and the electronics that generate electrical signals. Or one or more lead, thin wires that delivers electrical signs, signals from the pulse generator to your heart. And the other one is another one is biventricular pacemaker. It has three leads which send electrical signals to the right atrium, right ventricle and left ventricle. It helps the two sides of heart beat in a synchronized manner. The implantation of a biventricular pacemaker is known as cardiac resynchronization therapy. Another one is wireless pacemaker. The pulse generator and electrodes are combined into a single device that is about the size of a pill or a capsule typically positioned into the right ventricle and the another one is implantable cardioverter defibrillator it can be used to treat threatened arrhythmia it can sense arrhythmias and it can deliver electrical impulse to restore a normal heartbeat another one is temporary pacemaker in an emergency situation before going to permanent pacemaker implantation doctors will suggest a temporary pacemaker so now we can see what is temporary pacemaker it is used for the short term management of dysarrhythmia until the patient's rhythm is stabilized to permanent pacemaker can be inserted. It delivers electrical current only when the heart rate falls below the present rate, typically used for less than 3 days. Transcutaneous external pacing is primarily for unstable rhythms in emergency situation requiring two electrodes on the chest, positioned either in the anterior or lateral position. Transvenous pacemaker. The pace wire is inserted through a large vein into the right ventricle with the leads attached right to an external pulse generator box. And the other one is epithelial pacing. It is commonly cured with the four cardiac surgery patients undergoing open thoracotomy. Temporary lead wires are sutured loosely to the outermost layers of heart, exposed through the skin and connected to an external pulse generator. Now we can move to the pre-operative and post-operative instruction. So here the nurse will assess baseline vital signs, peripheral pulses and heart sounds, assess the patient's anxiety level, activity, listen, reassure, educate and given sedations if needed. Shave and scrub the site where the generator will be placed and maintain a sterile field such as sterile gown, bed sheets, etc. Catheterize the patient, get the consent from the patients and relatives, keep a cardiac monitor before, during and after procedure. Assess the insertion site for bleeding and infection after the procedure. Provide painkillers and antibiotics as per the need and as per the doctor's prescription. Complete blood rest is recommended for at least 12 hours. Then monitor for complications of insertion such as pneumothorax that is a collapse of lung and hemothorax, collection of blood in pleural cavity. Preparation from the pacemaker lead, cardiac tamponade. These complications are seen as shortness of breath, low blood pressure, chest pain or rapid heart rate. Then monitor lead dislodgement, in, which can be seen in ECG changes. And put cannula on both hands. Monitor ECG for loss of sensing, loss of capture or failure to pace. Apply ice pack to minimize pain, swelling for first 6 hours. Assess insertion site for bleeding and antibiotics uh, should be infused according to the need of the patient and as per the doctor's prescription. Get an x-ray chest in order to identify whether the pacemaker is implanted in the correct position or not. Restrict movements of affected arm for 20-24 hours. After 24 hours, assist with a gentle range of motion exercise 3 times daily to restore normal movements and prevent stiffness. Do not give aspirin or heparin for first 48 hours. So these are the major instructions which we can do and give to the patients. And who needs a pacemaker? A pacemaker is used for heartbeat that has pauses, a heartbeat that irregular or too fast, some types of heart failure, 
These symptoms may be caused by factors such as age-related changes to the heart, damage to the heart due to prior heart surgery, heart disease, previous heart attack, and congenital heart condition, taking medication that can slow heart rate such as beta blockers or calcium channel blockers, and heart conditions like pericarditis, myocarditis, cardiomyopathy, systemic sclerosis, hypothyroidism, and sarcoidosis. So, now the risk. An allergic reaction to anesthesia, bleeding or bruising, blood clot formations, damaged nerves or blood vessels, an infection at the site of incision or of, of the leads. Another one is build up of scar tissue around the pacemaker, formation of pneumothorax, fluid collection around the chest, and a punctured heart which can be caused by displaced leads. So, moving to the next, what the pacemaker precautions should you take? Modern pacemakers are not as sensitive to electrical devices as the old one, but certain devices could cause interference with your pacemaker. If possible, try to keep at least 6 inches away from these devices. For example, try to avoid being around magnet or equipment that uses magnet, keeping all cell phones in the pocket over your pacemaker, holding a cell phone up to the ear that is on the same side of your body as your pacemaker. Allowing your headphone to rest on or be close to your chest. Wearing a smartwatch. Extended exposure to metal detectors including handheld metal detectors. Linearizing near anti-theft systems such as those found in department stores. Some types of electrical equipment such as high voltage transformers, electrical fences or portable car battery chargers. There are several also medical procedures that can interfere with your pacemaker. So some examples are CT scan. MRI scan, electrocauterization which is used to stop bleeding during surgery, electrolysis that is a procedure that is used to remove body hair and the other one is microwave diathermy which is used in physical therapy. According uh, Along with this there is a radiation therapy for cancer, radiofrequency ablation procedures which destroy the nerves that send pain signals and shock wave lithotropy which is used to treat kidney stone and transcutaneous electrical nervous stimulation these are the main uh, things or uh, main uh, examples that will uh, mainly interfere with the patient using pacemaker and what are the educations we needed to give to the patient before the surgery before the pacemaker implantation the reason for pacemaker and the potential complication pre-test which one we needed for uh, pacemaker implantation and 12 lead ECG and chances of the bleeding should be educated. Need, uh, need of IV exercise, sedation and emergency medication should be educated and the patient should be educated regarding the importance of keeping per oral for 8 hours before the procedure. And what are the discharge instructions? Discharge instruction to teach the patient the placement of pacemaker generator and leads, how it works and the rate at which it is set. Amount of bleeding and infection, frontal frost freak, Bruising may be present, it should be educated. And minimize arm and shoulder activity of affected arm and wear loose covering activity over incision for at least one to two weeks to prevent dislodging of leaves. And tell them to avoid sports and heavy lifting for two months. Contact physician with the fatigue, palpitation, or recurrence of symptoms may indicate that the pacemaker malfunctioning or battery depletion is there. And carry pacemaker information at all times and wear medical alert bracelet at all times and we are at airport and to other situation also household appliances such as microwave ovens radios and garden tools will not affect pacemaker that should be instructed to them and cell phones currently don't appear to official pacemaker so don't worry about that avoid immersing the size in a water for three days inform before mri electrocautery like procedure because that will cause interference for the pacemaker functioning so what are the signs of malfunctioning Signs of malfunctioning include dizziness, fainting, fatigue, weakness, chest pain, and palpitation. So these are all about pacemaker. Who all are needed pacemaker? What are the precautions we needed uh, before and after pacemaker implantation? What should be we monitored? And uh, the signs of malfunctioning and discharge instruction. All things are included in this slides. So thank you.